downtime before things really heat up. So, John, let's start with uh, network performance. How's it looking at the moment? Tim, it's looking really good. And I don't know whether load has dropped or we've just made the network scale really well. But at the moment, everyone's getting serviced in great time. All of the dApps are performing well and there's no backlog. So this is exactly what we want to see. And when I start looking at the metrics on the network, so I'm digging into how blocks are transiting, how long they're taking to reach 95% of the state Cardano or nodes or SPOs rather uh, representing that, and how long blocks are taking to be adopted onto the chain. These metrics are looking great around two, 2.3 seconds. And this tells us that the network is healthy, performing well, servicing all of its users in a way that we want and ready to scale out further. So I think we're all really happy with it. So Kevin, obviously a large part of this is SPOs upgrading the nodes to the, to the latest version. How are we looking in terms of the network there? It's looking great, Tim. So uh, shout out to all the SBOs who are so on top of the game. What we're seeing from Portal is about 69% on the latest release version, 134.1, 22% on 133. And it's likely that the increasing adoption by the SPOs is the cause for the better performance that John has been reporting to you. We're expecting a new release soon, 135. We'll announce the exact date when it's ready, but there's absolutely no reason for SPOs to hold off. 134 is absolutely the right version to be on for the time being. And looking ahead, ahead of the Vassal hard fork, there'll be a few changes we're going to need operators to make to some of their scripting, just to deal with a few uh, tiny changes in the way the node is going to work. We'll announce that ahead of time so that nobody gets surprised by that. We'll, we'll call that out on Discord, Telegram, uh, etc. So keep an eye on that. Nothing particularly significant, but it's just to make sure everyone's node keeps working perfectly through the Vasil hard fork and beyond. So John, the network's looking uh, very healthy, but we're not stopping there, are we? Just to quickly build on what Kevin said, we want people to be on the latest and greatest. Just like companies like Apple and Google when they release their OS, they want to make sure there's not fragmentation. If folks choose to use the latest version, they're getting the best and the network benefits as a whole as more people adopt. So I'd encourage people to upgrade. We're not stopping there in terms of scaling out the network. So just a quick recap, we've taken blocks from 64 kilobytes to 80 kilobytes. We've taken mem units from 10 million to 14 million. And most recently, we took block level limits on Plutus memory units from 50 million to 62 million units. These are real material changes. But coming up, and uh, I believe just signed off and we'll be posting, I think, next epoch, we're taking the block size to 88 kilobytes. So again, this is a 10% increase in throughput on layer one. So these are real double digit increases. And I think we don't, we don't actually need it right now with the current load we're seeing and, and everything is being serviced well, but we're not waiting. We want, as I mentioned before, the network to scale as demand grows. So John, we're, we're looking good for the, for the Vassal hard fork. Um, perhaps you can just tell us a little bit about what's happening next. And I believe we've got a date we can share as well. Absolutely. So just to remind people, we can make releases and we do all year round. When we have a hard fork, what we're saying there is the protocol is changing in a material way. So we're leaving the old uh, version of Ledger behind and we're moving to a new version of the Ledger. And this event requires all of our SPOs and all of our users to upgrade to the latest node so that they can fork together. This is an upgrade event and it's a positive thing. We only need to do this when we're making significant changes to the Ledger. We've just gone code complete for all of the stuff we're bringing in the June Vasil hard fork. The thing to remember here is, it's not just hard fork items that we're bringing. We're also bringing a slew of new features and fixes and enhancements. But alongside those things that we'd have in a normal release anyway, we also have these hard fork items. So just to remind folks, it's stuff like enhancements, SIP 31, 32, and 33, reference script, inline datums, and reference inputs. And I've talked about this before, and, and uh, I'll talk about it again. These are things that are going to make apps sing on Cardano. And these are things that are going to make developer experience easier and better. We're also bringing pipelining, which is our enhancement to lock diffusion, which will allow us to scale even further. And as I've mentioned before, this is going to see us right up to the point where we release input endorsers, which is our next generation strategy. So we're code complete now. And what does that mean? It means that we've actually coded, or not me, <laughs> the, the, the smart people who work here have actually coded all of the changes that are required for these features. So they're in GitHub. They're, you know, the code is complete. 
But what we now need to do, because that's, that's a, of course, a great milestone, but it's not the whole picture when you're releasing something that has to be as robust and secure as Cardano. So we're now moving to a really deep QA. We're going to make sure everything is perfect. We're going to make sure there's no bugs, regressions, performance, slowdowns, etc. As we add all this stuff, we have to make sure we're just as good as we were before we added it. So we're in that process of QA right now. We're in the process of integration testing, which means we're letting disparate parts of the system like Ledger and Consensus meet each other with these changes for the first time so that they can see if they're interacting correctly, which we're not anticipating any problems with, but at the same time, it's still a lot of work we have left to do. We've also reached out and talked to our partners and exchanges to make folks aware that this is happening. As an end user, you're not gonna see much friction in terms of a user experience. You just download the new node, you fire it up and everything will be under the hood. But exchanges and other businesses have to prepare for this because we need them to be upgraded on time so that there's no discontinuation in their service for their customers. We're gonna have a test net ahead of time to help developers and exchanges play with this stuff so that they can, they can understand it, prepare for it. And ultimately, just to remind people, these cool changes we're bringing for Plutus, you need to take advantage of them actively. This is not a passive thing. So your, your apps that are currently there are not just gonna you know, use these features automatically. If you wanna use reference scripts, and to make your app lighter, you've got to do that. If you want to use reference inputs so you can do more reading of UTXL values and datums concurrently, you've got to take advantage of that yourself. So these are things that we want folks to use, and we're going to have lots of information around how to take advantage of them so people get the best experience. And then finally, just to add, we're targeting a date in June, and I don't like giving dates because in engineering, it's one of those things, whenever you give a date, it ends up being a mess. But we're looking at uh, June 29th. And some of you guys will be probably thinking, yeah, you know, they said June and it's now June, the, the last possible day in June. And you're right, it is. <laughs> so we're just giving ourselves as much time as possible to get all this work done. But things looking very positive there, John. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that update.